Hi there everyone, Lars here, back again with another D&D video brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers, because writing as an adventure is more fun with friends. And in this video, I want to return to the subject of dungeon crawling. But rather than talking about how you can make a really interactive dungeon, I actually want to approach this from the perspective of the players and talk about how you can prepare for a dungeon crawl, and what that might teach us novice authors when it comes to writing our own adventures and long battle slogs. For those who don't know, or for those who need a brief reminder, when we talk about dungeon crawls, it's actually a harkening back to bar crawling, in which you're like, let's see how long through the night we can survive before we just pass out drunk from how many beers and whatever else we've knocked back. When it comes to a dungeon crawl, dungeon crawls are usually meant to be punishing, grueling slogs. Whether it be because you're fighting so many monsters, you're overcoming so many traps, you're solving puzzles, you're dealing with crazy cursed effects, whatever it be whatever the dungeon masters put into that dungeon you are going to have to survive all of it and usually you have to expect it to be rather long and this is something that many new players of DD definitely run afoul of that they go marching on into a dungeon thinking that they're ready to just beat whatever and they're not prepared for how long this is going to be or what kind of challenges they're going to face and they quickly burn through their spell slots or they burn through their equipment and then they're only halfway through the dungeon they're like oh we can still go because the boss is right around the corner or the exit's right around the corner or the treasure's right around the corner it's all good and then boom they run into the next difficulty and again they're only halfway through the dungeon and they just get torn apart and even for veteran players, this can still happen to you. In fact, actually, in one of my games, most recently, uh, my party, we were going on this quest to go crash this party that some weird cultists or whoever are throwing in some caves on this island. We managed to make it through the island, but oh boy, we had to fight so many monsters and traps and barriers to get to this island that by the time that we got there we were spent and we're level nine characters level nine characters can do quite a bit and yet by the time we reached the island we had almost nothing left in the tank we were so low on hp we were so low on resources so low on spell slots and yet we still went into the caves and that was because we were thinking well there's a lot of caves along this island if we just go into one of these caves there's a good chance that this cave won't have much and what do you know we went right into the middle of the cultist lair and right now we're facing a tpk we're actually we ended on a cliffhanger with our with our bard going down and all of us have like 15 hp or less and we only have like one spell or two spells uh between most of us we are screwed. Why is that happening? Because we went into the dungeon unprepared. And we thought that, yeah, you know what? We know where the dungeon is-ish. If we go into another cave, everything's going to be fine. We're level 9 characters. So it's a mistake that can happen really to any kind of party. And a lot of the times it happens because in the spur of the moment, in the action of the story, you're getting into it, you're having fun, or you are not having fun because you're being chased by monsters. Whatever it be, you're not usually thinking about what you need to go into the dungeon. So this might not sound really like revolutionary advice to any D&D players out there, but I actually want you before you do your next dungeon crawl, to take some time with your party and make an accounting of all of your resources. Find out, okay, how many potions of healing do we actually have between us all? What kinds of special items do we have? Do we have enough rope? Do we have enough pickaxes and shovels? Uh, do we happen to have some sort of like magical explosive whatnot? How, what kinds of spells do we have between each other? Do we have a familiar that could help us out in a dungeon, whether that be going into a castle or into a cave or into some abandoned magical dungeon? Whatever it be, take stock between each other about what you actually have. And this is something that, again, I have seen with veteran players happen where they don't do that. I love watching Critical Role, and it's amazing sometimes how in the middle of a fight or in the middle of a dungeon crawl, the, the players are like, 
wait a second, do we actually have blah blah blah? Or, oh no, I use it, or wait, 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 I think I have something, and then they spend like two, three minutes like scrolling like, please, 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 please let that one item be there that I really need. <laughs> so it happens to all kinds of players. Imagine what it could be like if you took the time to say, these are my spells, these are my resources, this is what the entire party actually has to work with. And then, not just not just having a list of your resources and your powers, but also talk with the NPCs within the game. Find out what they know about the crazy castle. What do they know about the kooky lord that imprisons people in the magical dungeon? What do people know about the creepy cave that people have been vanishing into? What are the stories? By getting information to also go along with all of your resources, players can go into a dungeon feeling way more prepared to tackle whatever it is that they are about to face. Now again, this might not sound highly revolutionary, and this might even sound to some people like, well, I actually already do that, but let's think about this actually from a role-playing perspective. How often do you role-play your characters talking with each other and strategizing how you're going to break into a cave, how you're going to go into this palace or go into this dungeon and beat it. How often do you actually role play that? And in my experience, most people don't. And the interesting thing is this, is that if you decide to role play an inventory before you go into a dungeon crawl, you actually end up learning a whole lot more about not only what you have available, but what other people have available, and you can actually work this out really brilliantly within your gameplay, because now not only is, because it's no longer a meta moment where you're like, oh, I happen to have this potion of healing that I can use, but it's like a character is all like, quick, quick, give the bard the healing potion, now, now, and it just heightens the tension, it makes things a whole lot more fun, and it doesn't feel like you're breaking the immersion at all with a meta moment, because you've already roleplayed the, at the part of taking inventory. And believe it or not, there are some stories that have already done this. Most people, I think, don't give Tolkien the credit that he deserves when it comes to his immense amount of explanation and description, because he actually goes into pretty good description of what kinds of resources the Fellowship of the Ring have at their disposal in order to deal with the many challenges that they have, and it actually makes the story way more engaging and cool because you realize that they are normally scraping by by the skin of their teeth. They are barely surviving some of their encounters with the Dark Lord Saurons and also with Saruman's various challenges and minions. It's really, really cool. Having that inventory, knowing what kinds of resources are available and what isn't available, means that the characters have to get creative with what they have in order to succeed. And a really good manga that I came across recently, Dungeon uh, Sherpa or Sherpa of the Dungeon, depending on the translation you're looking at, is a story that I ended up really enjoying because of the practicality of the dungeon dives. That for the adventurers who go into these magical dungeons and fight all these ridiculous monsters and traps, your typical fantasy stuff, that you have a person who is hired by each party to come on in with all of the necessary items. That person is supposed to have all the healing potions and know how many healing potions there are. They have all the ingredients to whip up whatever is needed for the party in order to overcome various obstacles. They also come equipped with maps or they come equipped with rope or with food. Everything that the party needs so that way the adventurers are focused more on what they themselves are doing in order to beat the dungeon rather than having to constantly worry about whether or not they're about to run out of food or if they've run out of healing potions. And as ridiculous as the manga is, please don't milk me, Merchant John. What a silly manga. What an over-the-top manga. It actually, again, works for a very good dungeon-crawling story because... Well, the main characters have to take an accounting of what kinds of resources they have available. The merchant has all kinds of crazy things that she can use, but they have to know that all of these items usually have a drawback to them. And so it actually makes some of the really great moments within the manga brilliant 
is that the main characters have figured out these are our resources. These are the crazy items that Merchant Chan has, and these are their drawbacks. And this is how we can use all of that together to beat overpowered monsters or to beat other adventurers who are trying to jump us in the middle of the dungeon. By having a knowledge of your inventory and knowing what it does, what everyone has available, you can come up with great plans that don't feel like they just come out of left field. How many times have you read a story or watched a show or watched a movie where the characters do something and you're all like, that was fun, but how did that happen again? The rule of cool gets stretched way too often sometimes where you're like, that was fun. But really, when I go back and think about it, it really did make much sense. By taking the time to establish what people have in their inventory, what they're capable of, what they can bring to the table, it does make for an engaging story. It helps the players at the table become way more creative with, they, with what they have and also become more realistic about what they can do and sometimes learn when it is time to turn back and save themselves. Because you don't want to end up in a situation where my group is right now facing a TPK, because it could very well happen to us. We're ready to lose our characters, and that would be kind of sad, especially with how far we've come with them. So you don't want to find yourself in that kind of a situation. Taking inventory, taking stock of who you are, what you have, can really help out when you do your dungeon crawls. And for us novice authors out there, I've already brought up two stories, Sherpa of the Dungeon and uh, Don't Milk Me Merchant Chan, where we see characters taking the time to take stock, to have an inventory of all their resources at hand, so that way they know what they can do when they enter the dungeon and proceed with the dungeon crawl. This can be brilliant with your stories, and it doesn't have to be a, now let's take a whole chapter and list everything that we have. Normally, it's actually really good to have your characters go on an adventure, gain some items, use some items, use some stuff, get to know it a little bit, let the, let the audience, let your readers get to know what they have available, and then before doing a serious dungeon crawl, or proceeding on a serious quest, or invading the castle to break out the princess, whatever it is that you're writing, <laughs> that the characters now take everything that the audience has seen and some of the stuff that they haven't seen, bring it all together and say, okay, this is what we can do. I can turn myself into water and flow. That's excellent. What are you going to do about the massive uh, fire beast that's going to burn us up? Well, we happen to have here a wand of freezing that can freeze frame something for like five seconds. Ooh, okay then, that can work out really, really well. But wait, there's a problem with it. Whoever uses it is going to have really bad tummy problems. Yeesh, so what are we gonna do there? Well, I have an idea. And so then they, so characters start bringing out their various strategies, their various items, talking about the pros and the cons, showing that characters can be intelligent and plan gives the audience way more comfort and way more <laughs> hope that things are going to turn out well and that then they're like, oh, I can actually see where the smarts is. I can see how this is going to turn out. And then if as a writer, you're like, well, now the plan's all going to go to hell and the handbasket's going to go south. Then you know, okay, things aren't working out, but this is again what the characters have available. This is how they can pull themselves out of a situation. And then you're like, ooh, ooh what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? And you're not wondering what kind of BS are they going to pull in order to save themselves somehow and this is something that I myself will say as an author that I can definitely work on this I had some fun while I was writing the monarch mercenaries going over strategies and characters taking stock of what kinds of weapons and powers they had but there were definitely times even within that story where I was just like oh ho, ho, well this one character ha can do this or this one character happens to have that and it was still fun but looking back at it I'm like you know what I could have had even more fun with those limitations of what only is on the inventory list, and that's the only stuff that my characters can use. So there's some food for thought right there about doing dungeon crawls. Take your time to do a proper inventory as the players before you enter a dungeon. Make sure you're stocked up on health, make sure you're stocked up with spells, make sure you have all the items and equipment that you need to survive a long dungeon crawl, and roleplay it. Have some fun doing that. I think you can really 
come up with some really neat things, some really great character building moments as well by doing this. And as far as writers go, if you take the time to create an inventory before your characters go out and do anything cool, it lets everyone know what the limitations are and allows you to have more fun within those limitations and also allows you to get creative. And the audience gets creative as well and they're wondering what are they going to do, what are they going to do? I know that they have this on hand, will they use that? Oh, oh, oh! And it just heightens the anticipation and the excitement. So, those are my thoughts on the matter. Let me know about your experiences going dungeon crawling. What times have you gone in knowing you were completely prepared, or what times did you go in thinking you were prepared, and then you absolutely weren't? I'd love to hear your stories, and I'd love to hear your insights about how to keep an inventory, whether playing Dungeons & Dragons or when writing any one of your own stories. In the meantime, if you're looking for more writing advice, then please check out our other videos here on our channel, or you can head on over to our podcast, Camille's Harem, found on Podbean iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, The Works. We have writing exercises for you to check out over our Pinterest page, and we would love it if you would support us in our endeavor to help out other novice authors. You can do that by liking, sharing, subscribing, but most importantly, check out the books that we've published. We've done quite a bit, and we would love for you to read our stories and let us know what you think about them. Links for them are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us on this fantastic adventure that we call writing, and until the next video, y'all, Tschüss.